Hello and welcome. This video is for sixth grade math. And in this video, we'll be dividing numbers by two digit divisors, which means we'll be taking bigger numbers and dividing them by two digit numbers. Okay, here is the first one we're gonna be working on. We're gonna take the number 3,834 and divide it by 27. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it up where the first number is the number that goes inside the division bracket. So that's 3,834 divided by 27. Okay, so we're gonna follow the same steps as we would as if we were dividing by a single digit number where we divide, multiply, subtract, and bring down. The only difference is, is we may not know off the top of our heads how many times 27 fits into a number. So that's why we're gonna to have to do some multiplication and check or guessing and checking to see until we get the right answer. So let's start by trying to fit 27 into three. Now 27 does not fit into three. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a zero up here. Now, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and multiply zero times 27 and get zero and subtract that, get three left over, and then bring down the eight. That would be following the steps in order. However, if you want to take a shortcut when you get a zero, and instead of doing all that, you want to just go, okay, well, it didn't fit into three. How many times would it fit into 38? That's fine as well. So 27 would probably fit into 38 once. I'm going to guess because I think 27 times two is at least 50 something. So that's much bigger than 38. So one times 27 is 27. So I'm going to put that here and then I'm going to subtract eight minus seven is one. Three minus two is one. Now, the reason I know that that was the correct answer or the correct amount of times was because when I subtracted, I got a number that was smaller than what I'm dividing by. If that's the case, I know that I'm on the right track. If my number that I subtracted was bigger than the number I'm dividing by, that means I could have gone more times. Okay, so we got 11. Now we need to bring down the three. We need to figure out how many times 27 would go into 113. So there's a couple different tricks to this. What you can do is like you can round 27 up to 30 and then count by 30s until you get close to 113. So I think that's what I'm going to do. 30, 60, 90, 120. Okay, so that was like four times. So 30, 60, 90, and then 120 was too much. So maybe I try 27 times three to see what that is. So what I just did, that's just a guesstimate. That's just to give me a ballpark figure to start with. Another thing you can do is you can take the number you're dividing by and just start by multiplying it by five and see where that lands you. Well, since we already kind of figured it might be three, I'm going to go ahead and do 27 times three to find out what that is exactly. Seven times three is 21. And then two times three is six plus two is eight. Hmm. I got me 81. I'm not sure if that's close enough. So what I'll do is I'll add another 27 here just to see what that ends up being. So that's going to give me eight, a zero, and a one because eight plus two is 10. Aha. Uh -huh. So another 27 got me closer. So it'd be three times plus another time. So that makes four times total. Now, if I wanted to double check that, I could just try multiplying 27 times four just to see what that is. Okay, so four times seven is 28. And then two times four is eight plus two would be 10. Okay, so I got 108 again. Perfect, so this is 108. When I subtract that, um, I can't do eight minus or take eight away from three. So I have to regroup this and make this a zero and this a 13, which makes this five. And then the rest of that would be zero. So that means I'd have five left over. And five is definitely smaller than 27. So we're on the right track. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and bring down the four. Now I know that four times 27 is 108. So that's a, definitely bigger than 54. So, un, and we know that we did three and we got something that was in like the eighties or nineties or something close to that. So let's try two. Let's see what 27 times two is. Seven times two is 14. And then two times two is four plus one is five. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we needed. So we'll put a two up here. We'll put the 54 down here and subtract that with zero left over. So the final answer here would be 142. 
Okay, here is our next one. It's 1,990 divided by 10. Now, 10s are a little bit easier because we can kind of know those off the top of our head, so that's going to be easier. I'm going to start by putting 1,990 inside the division bracket and 10 on the outside. Well, I know that 10 does not fit into 1, so I can put a 0 there. And you may be wondering, why am I putting 0? What I'm doing with that is to make sure that my answer, when I get the numbers or the digits for my answer, they're all in the right place values. There's a lot of times when we don't put a zero and something doesn't fit, and then we end up with the right digits, but they're kind of in the wrong place values and then our answer gets marked wrong. Okay, so 10 did not fit into one, but it will fill, fit into 19 one time. So I'm gonna put a one up here, and then I'm gonna do one times 10, which is 10. Subtract that and get nine left over bring down the nine. So 10 will fit into 99 nine times because 10 times nine is 90. So nine up here, 90 here, subtract that, nine left over. Bring down the zero. And we know that 10 fits into 90 nine times again. So that is exactly 90. And then I have zero left over. So my answer to this would be 199. Okay, here is our next one. We're gonna take 540 and divide it by 30. So I'm gonna do 540 on the inside and 30 on the outside. Now there is a shortcut you can take with this one because if both your numbers that you're dividing by or you're dividing with end in zero, you can actually cut those off and you'll get the same answer. So if you wanted to proceed with this and make it a little bit easier, you could do 54 divided by three and you'd get the same answer as 540 divided by 30. But since we're talking about two digit divisors here, I'm gonna leave it just to show you how we would solve this. But as you know, like, or as I just said, if you wanted to make it a little bit easier for yourself, you could do that shortcut. 30 does not fit in five but it will fit into 54 probably once. One times 30 is 30. When I subtract that, I get four left over and a two here. So again, I know I was right because 24 is smaller than 30. Now I'm gonna bring down the zero and I'm gonna fit 30 into 240. Now, if you're not sure off the top of your head, again, you could start by kind of counting by 30s till you get to to around 240. You could also do 30 times five and see where that is and then adjust from there. But I'm also gonna use a trick where I'm gonna take three, ask myself how many times three fits into 24. And I know that that would be eight. So I'm thinking that 30 times eight will give me 240, but I'm gonna multiply it just to check. Zero times eight is zero and three times eight is 24. So yes, 240 is perfect. So I'm gonna put the eight up here, the 240 down here. And when I subtract it, I get zero left over. So my answer for this one would be 18. Okay, here is our next one. Now this one is kind of a big one. So we're gonna put that first number, eight, two, five, nine, two in the bracket. And then we're gonna put 29 on the outside. Okay. So 29 does not fit into eight, so I can put a zero there. I know it'll fit into 82. I'm just not exactly sure how many times. Again, I could round that to 30 and then count by 30. So 30, 60, 90. Hmm. So maybe let's try 29 times two, which might be a little too short, but let's see. Let me erase that. Okay, so 29 times two would give me 18 here, and then two times two is four plus one is five. Hmm, that seems a little small, so maybe I'll try three and see what I get. So 29 times three, nine times three is 27. Two times three is six plus two is eight. Oh, so yes, 29 times three is too big. It's barely too big, but it is too big. So that means I'm gonna put the two up here and the 58 that I got when I multiplied here. And now I need to subtract. I can take eight away from two. So I have to regroup and make this a seven and this a 12, which gives me four here and two here. So again, I am still on the right track because 24 is smaller than 29. Now I need to bring down the five and figure out how many times 29 goes into 245. That's a much bigger number. So what I might do, is kind of take a guess, but I'm gonna take an educated guess. 
because 29 times 10 would be 290, which is too much. But maybe 29 times 9 or 29 times 8, something like that. Let's try 8 and see how that goes. Seven or 9 times 8 is 72. So I'll put a 2 there and a 7 here. 2 times 8 is 16 plus 7. And sometimes I do this because it's hard for me to regroup in my head is 1323. So that should be 23. You know, that's pretty close to 245. I'm going to go ahead and try that and just double check and make sure when I subtract it, that my number is less than what I'm dividing by. So I'm going to put an eight here. I'm going to put the 232 right here. And then five minus two is three, four minus three is one. Oh, okay. So 13 left over. So yeah, I was pretty close and I wouldn't have been able to go another time. Now I'm going to bring down the nine. Okay. So we've done two so far and that was 58. We've done eight so far and that was 232. So we need something in between two and eight to multiply this by. I'm going to go with five just because it's right there in the middle and I should be able to adjust from there, either go up or down. Nine times five is 45. So I'll do that like that. 2 times 5 is 10, and then plus 4 would be 14. Oh, just barely too much. So that means I'm going to erase that. Instead, I'm going to try 4. So I'm going to put 4 here. Okay, 9 times 4 is 36. Then 2 times 4 is 8, plus 3 would be 11, so 116. Okay, so I'm going to put a 4 here, a 116 here. When I subtract that, I get 3 and two. So 23 is smaller than 29. So I am on the right track. I'm going to go ahead and bring down this two. And when I do, I'm like, Hey, that looks familiar 232. I think we got that once before right here. And that was when we multiplied by eight. So I'm going to go with eight again. And when I do that, I should end up with 232, which means when I subtract it and I'm going to have to write it off to the side here, <laughs> it should equal zero. So that means my answer to this would be 2,848. Okay, here is our last problem for today's video. We're going to be taking 57,309 and dividing that by 58. Okay, so 58 does not fit into 5, so that's going to be a 0. 58 also does not fit into 57. It is just slightly too big. So I'm going to put another zero there. So now I need to figure out how many times five or 58 fits into 573. Now an educated guess would tell me that 58 times 10 is 580 and that's barely too much. So I'm going to start with 58 times nine to see how that goes. So I'm going to erase that line. Okay, eight times nine is 72. Then five times nine is 45 plus seven. And again, not I'm not great at regrouping in my head, so I try to do this when I can. 52, okay, so 52, 522. Okay, that should fit just fine. So I'm gonna put a nine here, 522 here. When I subtract it, I get one here and five here. So that's 51. And then I'm going to bring down the zero. Okay, so now I need to figure out how many times 58 fits into 510. I'm going to delete this and get that out of my way. I'm also going to delete this, but I realized that times nine was 522. That's pretty close to 510, just slightly too big. So I think my next move would be to try eight. Eight times eight is 64. Then five times eight is 40 plus six would be 46. Okay, so that is smaller than 510. So I'm going to put that up here. And then I'm going to put the 464 down here. When I subtract, I can't take four away from zero. So I'm going to have to make this zero and make this 10. Oh, there we go, which makes that six. Can't take six away from zero. So this becomes four. Well, this becomes 10. And then that becomes four. Okay. So then I'm going to go ahead and bring down the nine. So now I need to figure out how many times 58 fits into 469. Well, if I look over here at what I just did, when I multiplied it by eight, I had 464, which is very close to 469. So I'm going to use eight again. And I'm going to end up with 464. And when I subtract that, I only have five left over. 
So that means my answer would be 988 with a remainder of five. Now you could always turn that remainder into a fraction or you could turn it into a decimal and keep, uh, keep dividing to get your decimal. So if you're ever curious about how we do that, for the fraction part, what we do instead of saying remainder five is we turn the five or the remainder into the numerator and then the 58 becomes the denominator of the fraction. So this answer could also be 988 and five over 58. If you wanna figure out what it is as a decimal, what you would do is you would add a decimal here and then add a zero down here and you would keep dividing until either you ended it or you rounded it to a place value. So either way, that's what you do with a remainder. You can either turn it into a fraction or you can leave it as a remainder or you can do a decimal. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you again soon.